And it's, and it's so amazing because it really suddenly appears. And then yeah. you get Mount Jefferson that is hardly ever seen. You know, from this? From anywhere, you know, except for the airplanes. And uh, there it is with an incredible lake. We can get closer. I gotta try and get the three of us with that in the background. Commentary on time determination and hazard. Pure time is hazard. When in chain, the spiral, mineral, animal, human, and superhuman starts. For there, time is liberated again. Also, time leaps toward liberty in the inverse process. In this way, the teaching fell from above and the superhuman was enchained to the rock. Macrocosmos 57 The Time In another place we have talked about the relativity of the point of view. We said that the logical point of view is abstract. It is a look from no place. It supposes that reality presents itself as a totality regardless from where one observes it. When according to this point of view we say that A equals A or that being is or that a concept is identical to itself, we suppose that the elasping is detained, presenting the object itself without transformation. But we see that the point of view of the observer is a mobile point, since its consciousness modifies itself instant after instant. That's what I feel happens when I study. Mm -hmm that the consciousness is modifying itself instant after instant. That's because it is. It is. Yeah. It is very different to think the object that I have in front of me to the object when thought. Proof of it are the transformations of the memory, deformations or discoveries of new characters in an object that was familiar up until now. And the microphone with a little battery indicator <laughs> Where is this battery indicator? Is this just on the right side? Here? No, on the side. My side? On the other side. On oh. the on off. Okay. Never mind, it's got to be worth pointing. So. We have to notice anyway that this is that it is o not only the point of view which is modified instant after instant, but that this also happens to the observed reality. Thus, the paradox it happens that the movement, when being thought, is detained as movement passing to become concept of movement. This is so because concept accomplishes the function of detaining all transformation in order to be able to express it. A type of thought that never detains itself would never have created a law nor a mathematical theorem. It would hardly know how to abide in a world that is in constant flux. For this thought, the seasons, summer, fall, winter, spring, could not be expected again because they always would be different phenomena, always new and original. Nature without laws and thought, without laws, would leave man without concepts in a chaotic flux of non-identical variations. Science would not surge, nor technique, and the sensation of abandonment would fill its consciousness. This concept appears as an organizational function of the chaos man. With this there can be n not be confusion. One thing is to comprehend the utility of the concept, knowing its limitations, and another is to believe that the concept contains the universe. The concept is put in check in front of the theme of time. Let's see how. I feel the elapsing of my thoughts and of my body, of my regular pulse, of my age, of my getting older. I hear the sound of cars in motion. In this moment, I am here. We have to laugh at that. I come from and I go to. I can, nev I can discover the movements that elapse, but my consciousness stays disoriented when I ask, what is elapsing? Towards 1500, St. Augustine said, I feel time and it is elapsing. 
but I don't know what to say when I'm asked what elapsing is. This is a case in which concept does not accomplish its original function, but to the contrary hinders it. As soon as I think time is concept, I detain it, and it escapes me, because by its nature it cannot be detained. Inversely, if I experience it simply, I cannot conceptualize it, and it is impossible for me to talk about it. One thing is to experience time, and another is to reason it, to conceptualize it. The dilemma has two terms that are exclusive between themselves or I conceptualize time in order to understand it, in which case it escapes me, or I do not conceptualize it, in which case I do not understand it. Thus the dilemma is reduced to these two terms, to understand or to experience. Hegel defines time as an abstraction of consuming, affirming that time is a concept. But anyway, it isn't the consuming in the time. Isn't something consumed faster or slower? Faster and slower. Phenomena of movement aren't they by chance because movement is displacement in time or transformation in time. The preposition in does not mean the same for designating the displacement of the mobile in the space than in the time because in the spatial ambit being in signifies to be and in the temporal ambit signifies being Juran that designs the internal transformation of the object gerund like a grammarical grammarical yes, yes a gerund a gerund an ing on the end an ing on the end anything with an ing on it right that's what I thought so Which then the poetry I know they told Club, us. By the way, right. trashed us for yes. using gerunds. Right, they did. Okay, it's a grammatical thing that I'm not aware. Of right. The oh, English language. if you say, they use it in business English all the time. They want you to say active English. Go and get the water. Mm -hmm. It's command oriented. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Uh, and you might say, are you going to get the water? Oh, I see. Right? It's, it's no. passive. Go get it. Going, are you going is passive. Go get is it's active. Pa yeah. Go command. Kurt's a master going of... Of gerund. <laughs> no, not of gerund. You're a master of the opposite. Of oh, yeah. Do this, do that. <laughs> pick this up, take that. No, you fix need the electricity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the door of the refrigerator. Do these exercises. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Take care of yourself, right? Get stronger. Uh -huh. You're not getting older, it's not weaker. I yeah. know, you're right. He is. It's a compliment. It's a whatever, right. It, it's a definition. <laughs> okay, it's interesting. So, gerund is a... Ing. It's an inging. Anything to ing. Yeah, but how does he use it there? Because that was... Well, to be is a spatial ambit. To be. To yeah, be. you're, you're capturing it as a form, to be. But being... Being is an experiential ambit. Right. Oh. You're experiencing being. Right? Oh, so the gerund is the experience right. in that yeah. case. To be the gerund is the experience. The concept. And uh -huh. the verb... The verb. Uh huh. Very um, nice. It is the. It's a thing of language. That's what. This is the whole thing I was trying to do my monography on. The origin of, of being. Uh huh. You know. Um, I'm hoping um, you're going to still try. Well, now it got me interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said before. <laughs> Today. <laughs> but it always well because we exhaust sometimes you know the inspiration uh -huh. so we sometimes have to find a new source yeah right ah, got excited again yes no that's perfectly especially true. when it laid it down you're very good at that you're protecting <laughs> Ken 
<laughs> yes, from you himself to, too. To, right, from me to, and himself. Exactly. <laughs> have to protect, We're like, going to see the three you. of us come up lower down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're going to see it. Yes. You're going gonna to laugh. Oh, when we get our, there. Yeah, right. I can't I fall off and our it's chairs. Include Alan Watts and everybody mm -hmm. in the stories. The perfect synthesis of the entire. Weekend. weekend. And it will be on time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Perfectly timed. They were perfectly Don't timed. try to detain it, whatever you do. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. I, for stuff, right huh? now, I'm going to yeah. just want to say that I'm letting go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Don't let go too much though, because you are needed, as you'll right. see later on. Right. Okay. You will Your be role needed. is needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing is the car in the space, equals it is, and, and another the car in time equals being. There's the car, but then you have the experience of being in the car. Mm -hmm. Like we did yesterday, right? right? It's different than there's the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that trip was important for that. Mm -hmm. Just to realize Very. that yeah. being um, there was no question about it. where we were. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we in, were the being car. in the car, <laughs> right? <laughs> All day in the car. <laughs> And it oh. appeared here. I mean, there's no fucking coincidence that that happens. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. No. 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 It's necessary because we're thick-headed. <laughs> or because we're intuiting. The yeah, whole we're, thing. we're... Something weird's going well, on here. I speak for we're, myself. We're in another unit. We ended up in another dimension with CeeLo. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. CeeLo's orchestrating the whole thing here with us. He right? is. He is. He's lifting us up. He's going to tell us what macrocosm 57 means at <laughs> some point, too. I'm, I know. I'm pretty positive. Let's see another case. When it is said that man is, the intellectual error is committed of detaining movement and the transformation. Right there. It is, because it, you fix the what you can't fix, because we're... Like Silla said, what is the body but time itself? Mm -hmm. In the internal landscape, you said that. Mm -hmm. It would be correct to say that man is not, but that he goes on being. Right. He goes on existing, and he wants that beyond death, even, Silla. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We go on being. Beyond, right. Beyond the body. That's. I never thought of it from this point of view. Yes, it's interesting it's very to think beautiful. of it like that. Yeah. In respect to time, and because of liberty, you know, of liberty, right? yeah, and liberation, and liberation and, and freedom, and, and then the entire thing. Um, that's the liberty is static, liberation is mm -hmm. dynamic. Dynamic again. It's a process. In respect to time, the logical point of view does not serve for its experiencing, but it serves to tell us that time is always non-identical to itself. That's a beauty, that, I Isn't think. it? I love that one. That it is always different and that it never detains. Heraclitus affirmed, nobody takes a bath twice in the same river. Very well. Nobody takes a bath even once in the same river, Nietzsche. It is evident that the elapsing is always different. One has to be very careful then asking what elapsing is, because in that case, one will not experience fulminating existence of time that sees itself in front of the concept. For this point of view, the intuition of numerous mystics can be apprehended when they say that God is not comprehended, but is lived. I like that. But don't candidly identify time with God because that concept of equality 
would degrade the elapsing of time in front of the false concept of immobile eternity. Mm -hmm. That's a tricky one. Yeah, it is. So then, uh, he's saying that eternity isn't immobile. Well, he's saying, they say, God is not comprehended, but is lived. Lived. So therefore, we cannot say God is. No. And, and, Again, and yeah. that's what I think when the Eastern people say, you are God for that mm -hmm. reason. Uh -huh. In the West, we say God is this. And we see it's it as an object is that omnipresent, we... is, 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 is. Yeah, yeah lots of is, is. And it's a degradation of the, of the, of the time, right? Of the eternity. Yes. Yeah. Of the eternity. Well, it's... Um, he says, if you try to say God equals time, that concept of equality would degrade the elapsing of time. You can't mm -hmm. say that right. because time is one instant after another. In front of the false concept of immobile eternity. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you have to almost say God's outside of time, I think. Right. You can't equate God with time because... So we get into the non-representational yeah, God. It, it's what we are get into the, the third quarter. Uh huh. There, I think. So then he goes to explain that that bit more about why you can't equate or identify God with the, the concept of being equal to time. The elapsing of all human consciousness is a puff in all the elapsing of the universe before the first consciousness and before the Adam there were previous instants but never existed and always there was an instant in which the first Adam appeared in space or if that Adam or energy always was there existed a previous time that's that's good Mm -hmm. In such a way, the anteriority of time is absolute and the positions of the supposed eternal energy or eternal matter are relative to time. Time is previous to its function and even if it is said there is no empty time but time in the things, time as a category of the real it is true that the real elapses and that the real surged suddenly, being a previous time in which it did not exist. So there's a, the time that we have now, and then there must have been a time prior to this when this time didn't exist. It was another time. Right. And there'd be one before that. that right. It's and not exist in, either. in an infinite regression, you'd have to say. You'd have to say, right. A previous time to existence or a not yet, a time of existence or now, and a time posterior to existence or not any more. That that's that, you know. Now is a no longer. Uh huh. Uh, and a not yet. Right. In any instant of time, now is a no longer and a not yet. So you, I. That's my favorite way of trying to conceptualize the movement of time. The futility of conceptualization. Well, you can't, yeah, but you, you can get a flavor of... You, it, right, you can for, get kind of It gives of you the structure of time. That's what I feel. Now is a no longer and a not yet. Good. You have to move through three positions to... I think our perception is mm -hmm. better way to conceptualize time than any concept. Because you get that, you just take the distance, that little bit of distance, mm -hmm. and stay in the present. I'll have, I gotta read you my, I wrote a poem about this, if you'll indulge me. Oh, of course we will.
Today, tomorrow is a yesterday. Today, tomorrow is a yesterday. Caught in the structure of time, I am taken out for a brief moment, or rather in to that stop part, that catches the essence of a moment and stretches on for a while, but outside of time. In a way, it confuses that part of me that always puts everything together and hangs a name on it. I have to stop and be where I am to sort it all out in my head. Now here, now there, now back here from there, now back there to see myself here from there. And I can't quite nail it, hang a name on it, as I said. All I can do is file it away in my head. In the end, I must let go of the grasping and come back with a jolt from wherever I was. I'm back, I say, and life moves on again, but not quite in the same old way. Pretty good. That was my <laughs> attempt good. at it. I love wow, it. Wow, that's a nice yeah. one. That was when I came to see you in New York. God, how come you didn't put that on the list? Well, I don't know. I, I thought it was too uh, esoteric or something. Come on. Too. Well, it certainly fits in today. Fits in yeah, for us. Uh, finally, <laughs> yeah. I, got to, I got to read it. Right. No, that's I mean, good. I was trying to deal with that, you know, uh -huh. the right. movement and the stop. Uh-huh, uh -huh. right. Okay, I said empty, and uh, not yet, and uh, not now, and uh, uh, the time posterior to existence or not anymore. I, I had not thought about the time before time existed was a time, and before that, you know. And it's a weird concept, time, isn't it? Well, it's not. Like you said, it isn't a concept. It is not. That you can get. No, you, we cannot get it. But we love trying. Yeah. If by the contrary, the universe is pretended as being eternal, it would be that from a always, which implies previous always. In this way, time is not a concept that designates the mobility of the beings, but it is the base of the mobility and of the existence of the universe. Thus, in the womb of elapsing, suddenly surged something in, or a point in the space, because space itself, as function of time, is space in time. Space without time never existed, but there did exist a time without previous space. to space. Wow, how about that, Tricky? Mm -hmm. Yeah, space surges. So space is a function of time because we don't have any problem with the concept of space. Uh -huh. no. This is just really no. easy to conceptualize it. It is. And it's, yes, a function of time. But time, right. Go ahead. So it was unidimensional. Yes, yeah, space without time never existed but there did exist a time previous to space. Space surges with the surging of time in time, in the womb of time. Right, right. Yeah, I know. Beautiful. In the womb of time. In the last instance, space and point are nothing but variations of time. Just to get a form, you have to go from this point right through now. space to that point, and you're working in time to do that, aren't you? You have right. to. Right. So, the point in the space, he's saying, can you repeat the last one? Yeah, space without time never existed, right. but there did exist a time previous to, to space. space, and then the next space time. surges with the surging of time, time the womb. in time. Right. Time surged in the womb of time. Right. So time gave birth to time, which gave birth to space, I guess. 
in the last instance, the surging of time in time, space and point are nothing but variations of time. This first point is different in T1, in T2, and in T3. Also different in its position in S1, S2, and S3. Thus the point will vary as time elapses and its variations are discontinuous. Yeah, you can't have a form without the elapsing of time, really, can you? You just have a point. A point. And that is right. Morphologically speaking, is is have to start with yeah. something. <laughs> also, it displaces itself centrifugally. From the first instant, it moves at at time, because it is its function. It moves, differentiating itself, getting away from itself, changing the perspective. I love that image. Getting away from itself. Yeah. yeah, it can be observed as an expansion, as growth, as irradiation. In this way, Concepts. we can synthesize in one instant a point surged, energy. This energy goes away from its spatial center. It goes away differentiating itself. The variations of energy are different in the measure that they elapse in such a way that concentrating themselves, synthesis. It transforms in matter, and matter, differentiating itself, transforms itself again into energy. This pulsing of the universe from matter to energy, and from energy to matter, this flux and reflux in the heart of time, can be synthesized in the Hindu image in the beginning surged Brahman, or creative force, and from this surged Shiva, or destructive force, and Vishnu, or conservative force. These three forces of creation, destruction, and conservation, conservation wow. interpret the movement of the world. Since Shiva, passing through the concentration, variation or complementation of the energy as matter, Brahman, until reaching the slow elaboration of the element, so he really got differentiation, complementation and synthesis from the Hindu image of Shiva, Brahman and Vishnu. Which one are you? That's what I was saying. <laughs> this relates to the three of us. Or in fashion at this time. Yeah. In the interior of a system, inside no, a plane, no phenomena can make its movement evident. The different times of the elements that are included in the interior of an ambit or a system are not ignored, but it is known how its variations are relative to the system to which they pertain. Right. You cannot get out of the plane. You can move around, you can mm -hmm. go to the bathroom, sleep, but it's all contained there. And there. Make sense? Mm -hmm. The system is a big synthesis within which differentiate differentiations, complementations, and also small syntheses are established. Mm -hmm. But without evidencing its mobility outside of the system to which it pertains. Right. The idea is, you know, we're in this... I mean, the system you could say for the early discoverers was the Earth. Right. But they couldn't get that we were in this galaxy floating through space, right? Mm -hmm. They could only see this... Well, you were talking about the days we have come from the seven planets that they could see. Right. 
the bit where it was yeah, obvious. That that was the obvious. That's what he's mm -hmm. saying here. They only broke the level with the telescope. They were able to rupture the level of that system. Or something happens from that system that reveals itself yeah. and like, said, like oh a, shit, this is new. Like a media. Yeah. Media writer. A writing. meteor, a, a, how do you call those other guys that they follow? Comets. The comets. comets. Yeah. yeah. Or, an, or an alien spaceship landed. That would really rupture the level. Kurt, did you want to say something about it? No. I, I was you... thinking of more simple systems, trying right. to think of an example where where it really worked for it really said system to me, like mathematics. Well, okay. I was thinking. Or here is this what you were working on the electricity. Uh huh. It all seems to work and you have little, the lights went off and on and you fix it. But if we get a power outage somewhere, right. no amount of trying to fix it here will bring the lights back on. Right. Mm -hmm. Does it happen some in the larger system? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. True. That's a good example. Mm -hmm. in and that can be true for us in terms of death and transcendence, you know. That's a stretch. That's where he's leading, though. Yeah, who said it? <laughs> no, he is. He's saying that's the whole discipline of, of rupturing the level is breaking the mental form system. Uh huh. Uh huh. But we're in. Yeah. It's what is not that? And I mean, if you don't admit that as a possibility there's no way you cannot believe in death okay i admit it we we should read this the the, the cell thing because the cell is a good one to to understand it, it was just where you were right at the very end yeah if you just can the system of the cell mm -hmm. apparently broke by internal differentiation. Mm -hmm. But what happened in reality is that an internal differentiation was operated because of the variations of tension exactly. or and energy the of the cell in relation to the whole. You see, so to the system. So that's for me is a beauty. You know, here we are with you know perfect in, in one system, we're inside the cell, very comfortable. Uh -huh. And then Somebody is observing the phenomena, and then it splits, right? Oh, two cells were created. Yeah. But it's not true. That splitting happened because there was a variation on the system that contained the cell, that affected the cell in such a way that that differentiation was possible. It's what I understand. Otherwise, it would be a perfectly good cell without doing anything uh -huh. without expanding without reproducing without mm -hmm. any movement so right so he uh, so differentiates it take it takes a sit it takes a smaller system and says this differentiation which seems like it's part of this small system is in reality only happening because, because of the system that surrounds it that's right and that's his whole ambit, you know, you right. have to study the ambit in which something is right. to understand it. Because uh -huh. you can't study right. it in isolation. That seems to be a universal law. It seems to me that it has... It is. It is. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. <laughs> it is. But it it's is. beautiful to see it from the point of view of yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and I think it explains the force that is not mine. In many ways. It does. If in that Gnostic prayer, uh -huh. the uh -huh. whole thing. Because that's coming from, that's the intuition. Comes that, from you, but is not yours. And, and it lets us know there's an intuition of transcendence. And I mean, in, in a simplified version of this, I see it as that I know that it's not mine, not because it has, not because I don't produce it. It's because it's in you. 
and in you and in you and in you. So uh -huh. it cannot be mine if it is in everybody. Uh -huh. yeah. right. But I, I have it. You know, uh -huh. that yeah. Every time that I have experience, even with smaller things, emotions and things, it's a sensa sensation of expansion, of being connected yeah. with something different, much more interesting. Yes, very much. And more. I do identify that with the horse because it has strength. I don't, you know, by myself. Uh huh. Only. But when that happened, oh, it's, 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 I don't know. It's, so that's the wonderful thing about the Hindu, where they. Um, where the the you could say the transformation goes towards the sensation of being connected to everything right that that and I'm um, opening the door to the so then what happens is the the whole individuation that exists around us mm -hmm. that's part of this culture that kind of is the motor underneath capitalism. That's right. Mm -hmm. That whole individuation drops away. Mm -hmm. And there, and, and instead there's a unified whole that's, that's non-dualistic. Right. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the, the interesting, it would be really good to, to study one of these days if we have on New Mexico maybe with the method the capitalist system, uh -huh. you know, how how it has no possibilities because uh -huh. you know, it cannot accept anything else that what moves it. I, I mean, yeah. it's a closed circuit. It's a closed system. Uh -huh. So it will never benefit humanity. It will never. Nothing will ever happen out of that. Uh -huh. you know, because it, it it doesn't have what you're mentioning. Uh -huh. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't. It needs to replenish die. itself, only right. that. It's like a virus. It's yeah. Gonna eat itself up. Mm -hmm. Eventually, everybody will, a few people will have everything, and everybody else will have nothing. That's the logical, that's where it's headed. That's, I think, what Silo wrote about. Uh huh. It's getting more and more like that, mm -hmm. you know, where. The pyramid, I'm sorry. Like the Matrix, you know. Uh -huh. Right, right. Like the Matrix, right. We can, in the end, all we do is all we are is batteries for. Yeah, it's gonna eat itself. Yeah. There's a great monography in here, I think. <laughs> yes, there's a lot, Isn't a that? lot of the, a lot of elements here. That's the end of time. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> That's where it, he stops talking about time now? Yes. yes. It's the no. end of the time. Oh section. no. But now it comes <laughs> determination. Determination. Yeah, okay. This I'm is gonna move this a little bit. And so freedom. It, this is quite short. Because we know determination. The mechanical and biological systems conserve themselves in the ambit determinations. The mechanical system possesses laws proper kinetic, but it does not expand, being able to formalize itself thanks to mathematical measurements. The biological system possesses movement of growth, but it development or disintegration, be it development or disintegration, but even in the second case it tends to new growths, etc. The movement of the mechanism is, in a certain way, exterior to itself. What was the name of the second quadrant? The determination. Yeah. Determination. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why I said we know about that one. <laughs> why did he? How did he get into this? So I'll be damned. So the movement of the mechanism is in a certain way exterior to itself because as a rigid synthesis neither differentiations nor complementations are produced in its interior. 
We do not ignore that internally its atoms move at normal speeds and that a major or minor irradiation of energy exists according to either a gearing of uranium or iron. But its transformation does not possess neither the same time nor the same characters of growth of the organism. On the other hand, birth, growth, decline, death are steps that must be accomplished inexorably in the organism. Its internal movement is evident and also its external mobility, independent to the absolute inertia of the mechanism. With the characters of the mechanism and the forces that impulse its movement being known, its behavior in a T1, T2 or T3 can be previewed. The same happens with the biological laws according to the comprehension of the animal or vegetable system of which is talked about. We talk about its development, of its movement or of the four steps through which it has to go. So there comes the determination mm -hmm. that it can be previewed in time. Yeah. A mobile in front of a system of forces, for example, in front of the events ABC will follow a course P. An animal or a plant will die without food or that rock will produce that effect in its respective structures. On the other hand, varying the ambit of the plant or the animal, they also will vary. Let's see now what happens with a system such as of the one of the human mind. Without doubt that it possesses a great number of determinations imposed by the circumstances and the external shocks or equally by the internal pressures because of the animal organism that serves as a base subjected to the biological determinations. But in the mind appears a system of times structured in such a form that the order or the succession of events are not produced in the usual way as in the mechanical and biological phenomena. There is escape from prison. It's, that's, it is. Yeah. In other words, even if the structure of the mind is subjected to determinations, ex expressions entire in the system of hazard more readily. I don't know if that's the right word there, it says entire. Even if the structure of the mind is subjected to determinations, its expressions entire in the system of hazard more readily. No, I don't know what But he's is. making the case mm -hmm. of the uh, consciousness, the mind, the mind, mm -hmm. is not subject to the me mechanical and biological determinisms. Right. It, it's the like you said, the way out. You the know, way it's out. breaking the level. I have to go break another level. I'll be right back. Then we'll. Shall we do hazard then? No. Yeah. 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 Well, this is getting exciting now. But so beautiful. Wow, the last part's quite long. It almost as if we have, well... Is it still running, Kurt? Yeah. Yeah. We, we have a different, uh, we come from a different place, that's all. Yeah. We didn't even know that we were approaching these themes from a different space. No. But we are, obviously. Mm -hmm. This section... From the giggles, you can tell from the giggles. Uh -huh. Yes. This is going to be a challenge, this next one. The last one was a challenge already. Has it? For the thinkers in general, there is hazard because the enchainment of the phenomena is unknown. For some logical thinkers, for example, there are two types of series. Those that express the order or solidary or of a causal type and those that are independent among themselves or of a causal or 
hazardous or fortuitous type. The investigation of hazard is generally linked to the concept of probability. These thinkers suppose, as Poincaré said, that hazard is a positive reality and the calculation of probabilities is not a deficient mathematical way, but it corresponds to the structure of what is real. Sometimes the existence of hazard is considered due to the growing deviation between the causes and the effects augmenting. Because of this, in the measure that it passes from the physical to the social and historical. There is a point of view that through other ways seems to ascribe to our thought. It is the one Borel that enunciates the following. The necessity and the determinism are something merely global and not particularly particular. Determinism expresses a more probable state of the phenomena being the minor probability, the one that could inclusively constitute the probably, probably state of the physical reality. I think he's going against cause and effect, which he doesn't believe in, mm -hmm. as opposed to more structural thinking. Probably. Necessity and determinism are something more global and not particular. Determinism expresses a more probable state of the phenomena being the minor probability, the one that could inclusively constitute the probably state of the physical reality. According to Heisenberg, the universe in a corpuscular state subjected to the quantic mechanic and to statistics will be expressed by the state of minor probability and the formation of a heavy universe would represent a step to the one of major probability counterweighted by the development of living matter. In this case hazard would be the primordial constitution of cosmic reality. Is this the Heisenberg uncertainty? principle mm -hmm. he's referring to here. Seems I to don't be. Know. We don't know what else Heisenberg wrote other than that. So the certainty principle is that is the entire universe is... No, uncertainty. The uncertainty. Uncertainty. The uncertainty. uncertainty principle. Okay. It's, the, it's the probabilistics. It's the idea, for example, that to say that uh, you can look at an atom uh -huh. is the is illusory because you can only say that uh, it's the the guy who's looking is influencing the position of the atom which is not there when he sees it it's the be being because and it's to already be again. it's already gone no, it's right. what we saw earlier yes right. what we discussed is you cannot you stop the you the, can't the stop time. it so you yeah. can't say you, the atom is the that. phenomena escapes the observation yeah yeah because you have to detain it right or you transform the observed object by well, you your transform. own act of observation. Yes, yes, you do. Oh. And you create an illusion in doing that. That's correct. Cannot be because natural. then you represent the false, false reality, which because you observed it, you think it's real, but for everybody else that you tell it to, it's false because <laughs> you've already ru ruined it. Yeah. Based on these ideas, hazard or discontinuity, the continuous and the evolution would form a new conception of the universe, at least for the modern physics. Referring to this problem, Bergson says, <laughs> yes, Bergson. hazard is an idea that oscillates between the efficient and the final cause without stopping in them. In rigor, hazard is not an order, but the idea that we have of a situation, and therefore it cannot be understood without mixing our expectant attitude to
to the pure idea of the hazardous. Mm. This reminds me of um, what you said about don't believe you're getting old. Uh huh. Right? Getting old and frail and sick is, you could say, is a hazard. One of the hazards of getting older is you're going to get sick uh -huh. and not be able to move around. Your joints are going to seize up and all that. I have a, a very important question. What is the definition of hazard in English? Hazard is... Um, okay. It's an important one for me. I knew you were going to ask me to use this. Or yes. Something. yes. <laughs> I would do exactly the same. It's what is not within well, the limits. Well, it, it's the probability of right. something happening. Right. It's bad. But it's, in Spanish, it's more what is not going to happen. Oh, is it? Yes, that's why I'm asking. It's what is not. Well, that most likely will not happen. It's kind of, you know, oh. it's not within the probabilities. That's called Assad or oh. Hazard. Wow. wow, that's not the English. That's not why at all. I, that's the, why I'm the English is... Uh, We're going to have to look at both. If you said... Um, it, the ro it, it, it was very cold and it froze last night. Could be hazardous driving today. Which means that you could get... Have a, there's more you likely... Have probable. A, there's a probability that you might have an accident. Right. Let me check the Spanish then. Because you I know what? The way it. I think of it, Ken, is um, that it takes the stability and puts it off balance. It creates a, a tendency towards being off balance. Yeah. It says a danger or a risk. Uh huh. Peril, risk, jeopardy. Oh. Accident, a chance of being injured or harmed. A bad translation. Does it say anything about bad translation? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Unavoidable, unavoidable danger or risk, even though often foreseeable. Chance, fate, randomness. In Spanish. Mm -hmm. That's the equivalent. Yeah, it says here, um, chance... Faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Huh? A, a game of chance like craps. Source of danger. Wow, there's a lot of there's a things lot going of, on here yeah. about this word. Not menopause cysts. Let's see a Merriam Webster. Does he do Spanish too, Merriam? Game of, of chance, right? Accident, misfortune, random, randomness. Okay. There randomness. We go. Randomness, I think that is a call, the closest one to what he. Would. Okay, I think it's going to reveal itself. Now. Okay. Let's keep Beautiful. that randomness. Well, you know, the one word can throw the because of the conceptual way yeah. that we work. <laughs> yeah, one thing can throw it all off. <laughs> right, throws everything off. Funny. So even that's hazardous. <laughs> even no. that, even right. hazardous. It's hazardous. hazardous, right. Dangerous. In rigor, hazard is not an order, but the idea that we have of a situation and therefore it cannot be understood without mixing our expectant mm -hmm. attitude to the pure idea of the hazardous. Right. So there's where random... Is. That's what I was referring to you. You, you said don't... Right, because it's... Uh, the idea that right. I'm going to get old and, and seize up 
is influenced by my expectant attitude about it too. You were saying modify your fucking expectant attitude about all that. Yeah, right. Start yes. frigging what, exercising. Right, that's what he said. You know, that's what you said. And then, uh-huh. I, and then I got all pissy with you. You did, very it. much so. <laughs> but we got a new differentiation out of that. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> right. We got, I admire yeah, the, got past, a yoga class. The, the, the quickness of the transformation. That's, uh, for me, the most important thing. <laughs> From here comes the frequent confusion in the examination of the idea of hazard. The hazard is qualified as opposed to the intentional. Mm -hmm. When the idea of hazard is only an intuition emptied of content, a fact that only acquires sense in its reference to humans. Hazard is not opposed to the intentional, but rather the inverse. Hazard and intention are two aspects of a same reality, opposed to the mechanical. Right. So you, you have to factor in some probability of hazard into some whatever probability. plan. Right. Into whatever plan you're doing. If one believes, for example, that all the facts have an intention hazard. Sorry, if one believes, for example, that all the facts have an intention, hazard is practically eliminated. Talk about an intentionality that that is not necessarily limited to the ambit of human consciousness. Right. And if the phrase of Bergson where he says, when the idea of hazard is only an intuition empty of content, a fact that only acquires meaning in its reference to humans, we amplified it beyond humans. Hazard could cease being an intuition empty of content to convert itself, perhaps, into the key of all the contents of the one things and humans among them would be simple expressions or reflexes. The conception of apparition of a point in the womb of time is hazardous from a certain angle and from another it is intentional. So it depends on where you see, how you see it. Yeah. The hazardous behavior of mind also reveals its substances, if we could name it as such, its temporal substance. But at the same time, nothing is as intentional as the mind. The entire universe could be reduced to this formula. Everything departs from hazard and to hazard it returns. But this circle, once generated, is not not hazardous anymore, but intentional. Uh, so so he's it's not t- random. He's talking about entropy there. I think he is, yes. Mm-hmm. He's using the interchangeable with entropy. Hazard and everything. It feels like that, yeah. From if, Yes, because it is. Okay, what is entropy? Entropy is the tendency... Random, everything to go to random nothingness. Right, it's Pure, like the second law of therm- thermodynamics. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like chance, you know, it's just... There's no organization in it at all. Things will tend to fall apart. And who came out with this thing? Um, it came out of uh, ast- astrology, I think it came out of. It came out of the vision of the planets decomposing. It came out of the tendency towards the material things to go down. It's the th- second law of thermodynamics. It's the exact yeah, that, same that, thing. That things go cooling themselves. Right. Heat gets lost and doesn't come back. It's like the mm-hmm. thing. If something's up, it'll always go down. If something's hot, it'll always cool off. If something's, you know, that's all entropy. If something's Rocks will always decompose into sand. Um, sand will always decompose into dust, and all of it turns back and into why energy. Why entropy? Because is it tropism towards the center? No, no. What, what is entropy? I would think it's separated in right, right. Tropism is a good pick. Tro- it's, yeah, it's non-tropism. It non-tropism. Yeah, it's a non-tropism. Like. Uh, 
but that's not possible in and, the definition. Yeah, tropism is leaning towards, entropy right. is falling away from. Okay, but it's a tropism towards something anyway, not... I cannot conceive it that way. You can't conceive of entropy? No, I have a difficulty. Uh, because everything is a, has a tropism, right? No, but living things have tropisms. I mean, non-living things don't have tropisms. That's what entropy is. It's about the non-living. Oh. It has to do with the physical. The inorganic? The inorganic, yes. Okay. It applies only to the inorganic. Tro entropy only applies to the inorganic. It's almost as if it's to say, and Negro said this a million times, that you have the... The universe is falling apart and life is ascending in the same moment. Right. Okay. That's, that's what he's saying here. Within that cycle of hazard, returning to hazard, intention, it can be intentional that's right, moving Right, because it, it. the way I see it, I mean in a really weird way, is that yes, the sun is going to die, die, go out. And in the process, it's going to heat up this planet in such a way that is not going to be we'll, any we'll possibility be. to endure it. Mm -hmm. So in that period of time, our intention is going to make us go into other planets. To get out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that is definitely something that we can do and escapes. Yeah, and that's the hazard we're living with. I mean, nobody thinks about it really, but... I know. <laughs> that, we are, right. life is going to end on this planet as we right. know it. But at the same time, already, because of that, there is that mechanism. We're already off the planet. going yeah. out. It's in, there. Yeah. Against all, all laws, against all odds, against everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Against gravity. Against, yeah. exactly, against the biggest <laughs> one, <laughs> yeah. gravity. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's always that thing that I don't, so I see it also as a structure. You know, uh -huh. because the two movements exist at the same time. They yeah. are part of the whole thing. Yeah, one right. to liberate itself from its conditions, and the other one to keep things stable towards nothingness. But it's not really towards nothingness right. because it's generating also the possibilities for the escape. We are thinking, but mm -hmm. the entire universe can be reduced to this formula: everything departs from right. hazard and to hazard it returns but this circle once generated is not not hazardous anymore right. but intentional no. intentional and <laughs> intentional <laughs> brings freedom yeah well it's coming to that now okay good i was getting a little yeah. bit anxious yes like <laughs> fucked we could tell <laughs> from the interior it's of the second quite from the <laughs> we're in the second yeah, yeah from the interior of the mind the substance of the universe can be apprehended. Yeah. And in the same manner, the substance of universe reveals the interior of the mind to us. From the helium nebulas to the first proteins, the universe expands itself in continuous attempts to recuperate its liberty. All the worlds are attempts Wow. that time realizes to liberate itself again through the big creative chairs of evolution. Then the first sentence. The yes. vital yes. Elam, how Bergson would say, opens its way until reaching memory, the consciousness of past, and the accumulated time able to project itself freely towards the future, and that leap of time forms the present. The development of nature proceeds by accumulations of times, by memory. Human mind structure of three times tends to absolute liberty, tends to destroy the system of determinations, even of the body, in order to advance towards the future. This is what you were saying. Right, right. right. New section. Probability, expectation, the act of waiting, 
and hope. That's a good title. Are we okay? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. we're good. Probability is understood by defining it through the existence and the election of aspects of that existence. Probability is a concept of the future time. It is the hope that the chosen aspects are manifested. Mathematically, the probability measures the future time. For example, probability of 10% signifies that in 100 future events, the expected event has to manifest itself 10 times. In the same way, if the event is simultaneously expressed as all of 100, there will be 10 of the expected phenomena in its interior. We could say, you know, if we expect um, 10 people to get married, there's 10 of us here who will get married in, in there. We've got them already, you could say. Mm -hmm. in that second case he gave being the apparition of the phenomena consecutive or simultaneous the fact is that the probability measures the quantity of phenomena expected in the future it is important to distinguish between expectation and hope because expectation is the psychological base of hope is simple expectation, potential of future movement, but without precision of contour. There cannot be arithmetical measurement on expectation, but there is on hope, which is the intentional expectation on differential aspects of an ambit. For hope to be, it is necessary that expectation exists and also choice favorable cases, so to speak, and that given choice has to be already made. Therefore, hope rests on expectation and in the choice already made. It is seen that the time of hope is the future, the choice already made is the past, and the one of expectation is the present. In such a way that the concept of probability is reduced to the following elements. One, ambit of existence, that which is possible. Two, aspects of the ambit, that which is favorable. These aspects are such because A, they have been differentiated, chosen in the ambit. B, they have been formalized as simple concept or as mathematical concept. C, one waits for present expectation, its next appearance, hope. Synoptically, probability, Ambit of possibilities, aspects of the ambit, chosen, expected. Well, that's a lot there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never thought of hope mm -hmm. as being um, based the future on the expectation. based on the expectation which is present. Mm -hmm. And what was the other one in the past? The choice already made. That's hope is the future, memory. the choice already made is the past, right. and the one of the expectation is the present. So, they, I mean, oh, really Well, you can have it be like having a baby, you yeah. know. And also, you know, I mean, you, you have something, you remember it, you project yeah. it, because you have that capability. But it's interesting that the hope is in the future, right? Yeah, because we, we say expect. she's expecting. Yeah because right. it's not here yet and the hope is it's going to be a healthy baby is what exactly. people usually say, don't they? Right. In that sense. It's raining. Yep, needles. It is raining. Needles. Needles, yeah. Covered. The probability depends on an ambit of existence and on the three times of consciousness acting in a singular way, favorable, favorable case in it. Attending to this, there does not exist possibility without ambit of existence, possible cases, and without times of consciousness, favorable cases. In this way, the probability does not have objective existence, but rather it is an interpretive concept of what is real, which confirms Bergson's point of view.
Who's Bergson? The book. That's the book. The book. He the book. has, yeah. About yes. intuition yes. and all yes. that. Yes. The one that. Yeah, that one. The one, the one. The but one it, and only. But it happens that up to here, our concern has been studying hazard as a particular case of the human ambit, and it is with those limitations that we can tolerate the existence of a hazard as dependent on human consciousness. It would take us too far away to talk here about a hazard in itself independent of humans, or in the worst case in which humans appear as a minute element aspect, if preferred, of the great phenomena hazard. Significance of the times in the appearance of the events. This is another chapter heading? Yeah. If the future events were constantly repeating themselves in one series or in two, they would establish a determined mechanical system and hazard would be broken. But if the past events would not influence the future ones, always the same series of the series could repeat itself because a third of the probabilities would correspond to each one and in each new movement the probabilities would always be of one third being the previous repetition of no importance. But we see that the operator is always surprised in his, her provisions and calculations, which puts in evidence that one, the events of those systems, roulette for example, are hazardous in all cases, and two, the past events in all... That's why it's random. Yeah. Random is a yeah. better word. The past events also have influence in the future events. If not in that way, nothing could impede that one series repeats itself forever. In reality, in large numbers, more than 10,000 tosses, all the series are leveled. More than 10? 10,000 coin flips. Yeah. Referring to the significance of the past time, it is expressed as a statistical induction for the observer, so to speak. The series are confirmed, for example, in this way. 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, etc. And the frequency of each series would be 8 times for the first one, 5 times for the second, and 5 for the third. All of that in only 18 tries. The statistical observer takes these elements of the past to infer future behaviors. The mathematical, ahistorical observer knows that he can never win because statistics prove to him in large numbers that the three series have repeated themselves with the same frequency and that the order in which the events appear is indeterminable in the future. The historical observer of the statistics cannot win either because he works with the logic mathematical criteria of analogy and pretends to trace curves of frequency because the system of hazard is always non-identical to itself. Logic and non-mathematics work with concepts that detain the elapsing, that identify that which is not identical. Last page. Hmm. Well, I'm thoroughly <coughs> worried. Shall we go for it? We can, yeah. we can no, either we go. Well, let's try so, to go all the way. Okay. It, it, yes. I'll, I'll read it. It's not bad. This is, it's about probability. Psychological right. observation of human types of the gambler can help us to understand this. There are three types of gamblers. <laughs> Which one are you? The magical, the dialectical, and the intentional. I never knew about this. <laughs> this is really good. The magical one hopes for the best. He sees a cripple before entering the casino and in consequence he thinks black 13. <laughs> <laughs> Logically he bets on the first column and the third wins. Or he counts the buttons on his clothes, there are 20. He divides it by four because he is drinking coffee on a table with four legs. And number five comes up. This number is in the second column. He bets and the third comes up. Disillusioned, he reflects and realizes that he should have added the four buttons of his vest because 20 and 4 are 24. Dividing the 4 by 4 comes out to 6, which is in the third column. Would he have won? 
fantastic. I know people who think yes, like yes, that. Yes, yes, it makes total perfect sense. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. The dialectical one. And if the never. first and third doesn't have one, he bets on the second one. Or if the second one had one, before he bets on the first and third. He's the gambler that always does the opposite because he calculates that the series tend not to repeat themselves. Things go well for a while, but soon winning the first one, he bets on the second and the third, and the first one wins again. In that way, it happens five or ten times, etc. I've done that. Mm -hmm. And the you don't keep betting on red because right. you're sure that right. black's going to come up. The intentional is the one that doesn't give a shit and or, or probably does the same thing over and over and over again, or not. <laughs> I'm guessing. Well, the intentional one, his dilemma is, I have to follow luck. And he is never in opposition. He bets on the first one and the second one wins. He bets the second one, and the first one wins, etc. We observe that the intentional as well as the dialectical gambler have partially true point of view. At times the series and the numbers repeat themselves, mm -hmm. and see. on occasions each go on alternating almost in order. The problem is that all of this always happens in a different way. And exactly that is what ruins all calculation. <laughs> Even when the future events depend on the past ones in the matter of hazard, that dependence is always different. That is why the mathematicians or the prob probabilitarian logics find themselves fenced within the limitation of their concepts. This is very great. interesting. If the three times that act expresses themselves in three different ways, it is useless to try and formulize future events utilizing analogies with the past. The criteria to utilize, on the other hand, is differentiation for the past, complementation for the present, and synthesis for the future. But for this, order is produced simply in the mechanical and biological systems of determinism. It is comprehensible, for example, the sequence birth, growth, death, and not in another way, death, growth, birth, <laughs> or growth, death, death. <laughs> but. As the system of hazard does not permit any ordered rhythm in the succession of events. Nevertheless, the three times are expressed as differentiation complementation synthesis the three of them are in orderly succession observing a fundamental system of hazard this can be seen differentiation heads tails heads tails complementation heads heads tails tails or heads 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 tails 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 Synthesis, heads, 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 or tails, 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 tails. So one is alternating, heads, tails, heads, tails. One is two heads, two tails, three heads, three tails. And then synthesis is all heads, all tails. And thus, is that the forms in which hazard expresses itself? Is this and only this one? Is this and only this one? In the same way that consciousness in, is in the limits of those three times, even if they are variations such as thought in past future or in present past, in the same way synthesis, differentiation or complementation differentiation, Therefore, the expression of time is the problem in hazard. This expression is formalized and the intellect conceptualizes it without hazard, hazardous problems are presented. And this is the reason why they cannot be apprehended by the ways of the common rationalization. Final bit.
Why are the series in relation among themselves, since the appearance of events in some depends on the appearance of events of others? If each series is found in the ambit of the possible thing, so to say, is in the interior of a determined system, the time of events of each series are times relative to the interior of the system in question. Thus, forcefully to the past expression of one series would correspond future expressions of the same or of the other series that are found in structural correlation. I think this is a footnote. I'll just read it. This is the very last part. When the phenomena are repeated, one series grows more than another, and nevertheless, in large numbers, all of them tend to level off. I think this was the uh, probability. Footnote to the, the beginning. To yeah. the 10,000. Then previous events are important. We give an example of this case. On three series, two are repeated almost always without interruption. The third is consequently shortened. In accordance to this theory, there is a major probability of appearance of future events left for the third series, since this tend to level off with the previous ones. This nevertheless can be interpreted from two points of view. One, having two series repeated, more than one, there exists also the missing Damn. page. Damn it, missing a page again. I have two materials with missing pages. We may have to recover that. This is I can't I didn't get the last part. To be Me honest. neither. Me so neither. I don't feel sorry. That's three. The three out of I, none. I exhaust my. But he says the form in image. which Hazard expresses itself is as differentiation, complementation, synthesis. Right. Okay. Those I want. Are that's the, a fundamental system of hazard yes i yes. want to do something too i want to say something say and mm, there's a reason why in my mind that there is no hazard no longer exists in any materials of ours in any of the it's never mentioned at all in any volume one or volume two no, in anything that's right it is finished by silo has been dropped yes it's out of the picture Right. And I think there's a reason why. Why? Do. Because he worked past it. Because, the, because it was a moment in his process when he wrote this. Yeah. And he's gone by it. He's dropped it off and said, there's, yes. other, there's other ways of explaining this that make more sense. But I, I, I agree with you partially. Yeah? Yeah. I, I think that it's, it's, a, it's a translation that produces a, a, a problem because what I interpret is yes there is freedom there is a randomness there is something that escapes the mechanicity of a system uh -huh. when there are certain conditions and that's what I get out of it say that again Fernando. that instead of Okay. The concept of hazard, I call it more conce a concept of randomness. Yeah. Something that escapes the mechanicity of a system. Yeah. So the second quadrant is that, is its mechanicity. Uh huh. And then the third one is the escape. Something that escapes but it. He defines in this material what are the conditions for something to Twisted. get randomness. Uh -huh. And that is when he introduced the complementation, the di I mean the differentiation, the complementation, and the synthesis. Meaning there is a past, a present, and a future. That in the consciousness yeah, is what make us free. But yes. you see, yeah. we have to go through the, the mental process of taking into a part. Mm -hmm. But it's there is the intuition. So he already got that way figured out before. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is missing, yeah, is the process, how to do it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that came later. 
But uh -huh. conceptually, I think that it's already there. It's already, you already gave us a, a, a way out. Yeah, okay. If we take hazard as randomness, uh -huh. meaning something that is independent of the system of, in, of conditionings that exist. You know? so, so hazard or randomness is our way out. It's it is. It's the guarantee that we'll get out. Right. Is the way out? Is the process out? Not a guarantee. The process out. Yes. Right. The process out. Is a is the possibility. Right. It's what doesn't what doesn't keep us in so a dense. it doesn't keep us in a mechanical right or biological system, right. but it's an intentional one. Because he said the consciousness is not subject to the biological determinism. Right. Not totally. Uh huh. It's if influence. it was, if we died, if the consciousness died with the biological system, yeah. but it doesn't, it, it couldn't carry on. There'd right. be no way for it to carry on. Right. So he has to find a way out of that problem. What and he time does is it? it? And he does it through this <laughs> lovely exposition of time. Right. Right. Well, it, everything is so wonderful until we get to the last two no, pages. I know. And I know. Then it it's a little bit complicated. It it's not very ability. well translated. Right. Well, everything before it is. I know, but, well, or it's too mathematical for us or whatever, but didn't, yeah. wasn't there another material there is similar there. to yes, this? Yes, there was. Similar. Mm -hmm. similar. I mean, we have to go at, yeah, we I, have I to start revisiting the, the other one. It's piqued my interest. Right. It really gave me a fresh look at the method. Yeah. And a fresh appreciation. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's uh, I got that, the same thing. Did you get you that know, feeling? Much more interesting way of looking at the method now. Yes. Because now is the the possibility. And it also relates beautifully. It adds more to the discipline huh. for yes. us. To for the mental us, discipline. Right, for the mental discipline, definitely. No, it's very good. I'm glad that we did it. Oh, me too. I mean, me too. These were excellent choices all the way around. I was sitting there and I thought, hmm, this would be a good one. We, this has been a great retreat. Yeah. Hasn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what a fucking gift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have to thank Janet for going to Uganda for this. Yeah. Well, you have, we have to thank her for having the, 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 the idea. <laughs> mm. You want to turn that guy this off? Is, okay, one thing I want to say, okay? is a synthesis for me. Mm -hmm. That the way that this last thing went and the way the last couple pages just kind of befuddled me. Mm -hmm. Befuddled. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just couldn't get anything out of it at all. Right. I mean, I could understand there were English words, yeah, and he was mm -hmm. talking about gambling, and no but it, it had nothing to do with me, mm -hmm. nothing yeah. at all. Okay. And then I thought, and I thought about it, and I said, well, it would be so much easier, it would be so much better for me if, the, if this ended with clarity instead of confusion. And then I said, man, maybe not. Right. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe, not. Not. maybe confusion is a much better ending. I think it is because yeah. it leaves because you something to struggle with. Exactly, leaves you, leaves you there, and it's yeah. like Pema, Pema it's Pema told, destabilizing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, it's destabilizing. It's like Pema Chodron talks about living without ground, mm -hmm. yeah. having nothing under you, no, no, nothing solid. Yeah, right. and it's so disconcerting that people are constantly looking for something to grab onto and to right. hold, you know, mm -hmm. to hold them up. Well, that's what he was saying in the Groundlessness. first Groundlessness. Mm -hmm. Because they want to hang a name on it and say, this exactly, is what it is. Exactly, right. exactly. Right. So I, that's my little way of making uh, a synthesis. Yeah. Perfect. Very it's nice. Good, I like that. it's true. Well, it is what you it is. You can go back and when they ask you, how was it? You say, I honestly didn't understand shit. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> By the end of it. But I had a good time but anyway. I try. Yeah. <laughs> but but I want to go and do it again. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't even, I'd never ever miss an opportunity <laughs> <laughs> to go through it again right. and end with more confusion. <laughs>
<laughs> Never. Uh, what uh, a gift. What uh, a gift. Confusion will lead to deconfusion. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where the mind goes. Yeah, right. And we have to right. go with it. I mean, it. it's like, it's so, how many millions of retreats have ended with I know, I know. I you know, know everything. I know. Now this one, I don't know shit. Yeah. Lesson before. Uh, no, but it's a good what's one. What's even funnier is we just made the whole thing up. Right, and that's uh, even better. Uh, uh, we improvised as we went along. I mean, mm -hmm. we didn't have a. We had no. We didn't sit down and work a plan out. And no. Right. Take. We did. I didn't take one note about anything. Yeah. Right. It's a very interesting uh, way of doing things. Yeah, it is. That I, it's also another unstable, you know, because... Uh-huh. Oh, damn. It, it's, can we turn this off? Yeah. We can. can just imagine. But I thought, yes, of course, it's off. <laughs>